Alright, 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 alright. How is everybody doing on this Sunday night? An emotional Sunday for all of us good, loyal Western New Yorkers. Uh, what a what a week it has been. What a wild and crazy week it has been. And I am so glad to recap it with you. I am Tim Sampso, Senior Fellow at the Western New York Pride and Loyalty Administration. I want to welcome you to another weekly meeting video cast for WNYPLA.com. We're live and local with you every Sunday night at 9.30. Unless, of course, the Bills are playing the 8.15 slot on Sunday night. Then we, uh, Or if the Sabres have a 7 o'clock Sunday game and then we wait until the game is over and then we... Uh, talk it over with you. There's there's always that as well. Uh, anyway, like our page on Facebook. Follow us on uh, follow us on Twitter at Tim the Commish. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, of course. Check out WNYPLA.com for more. Uh, all that good stuff. Admittedly, tonight, with all due respect to Sabres and Syracuse fans, we're going to be focusing on the Bills. We have not been uh, live with you since last Sunday night when we were previewing the big Monday night showdown uh, between the Bills and the Bengals. And obviously we know what happened. Um, and our thoughts and prayers, I, I tell you what, everything with DeMar Hamlin has just been a, a wild and what a what a ride! What an emotional ride! Uh, just starting with his collapse on Monday night. Um, I I thought I watched a guy die on a football field, uh, and I guess technically he did twice. You know, and just. As everybody's been saying, major, major kudos to uh, all of the training staff for both teams, the head coaches, everybody that got, you know, the EMTs, everybody that got there to DeMar Hamlin and uh, were able to set him up for success in the hospital. It, it, the fact that he's, you know, whether it's him or a family member, He's active on social media. That picture of him today sitting up in his hospital bed, it, it brought tears to my eyes. It it brought it it brought tears to my eyes. The dad uh picture today of DeMar Hamlin with his mom and dad. Uh just simply, simply incredible. Um I thought that the Bills and the Bengals did the right thing, pulling their teams off of the field Monday night. And I want to say a few things here. And because I know there's been a lot of back and forth about the five minutes and how unprecedented this, this was. And... I, I feel like most people watching us or listening know this already, but this was unprecedented. In 50 years of football at any level in America, this was the most traumatic thing to happen on a football field in 50 years and what I'm going to say is probably going to sound a little bit harsh but it's not meant to be we have seen players get career ending injuries on a football field life altering injuries we're talking about paralysis Kevin Everett with the Buffalo Bills. Dennis Berg, famously with the New York Jets. Um, 
you know, Ryan Clark, Ryan Shazier, both with the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, had life-altering incidences on the football field. But CPR was not needed for them. And that, that is what has brought this to a completely different level. You know, and, and Chris M says, if you didn't get goosebumps after that opening kickoff return, man, you're not human. Man, you're not kidding. You really are not kidding. Um, there's a couple of Pittsburgh Steelers who apparently did not have any goosebumps and lack all emotion whatsoever. And I think for those two guys... And we'll talk about that later in the show. But those two guys, if you've not seen it, I think deserve major, major fines. Six-figure fines. And probably some sensitivity training after a sack celebration in Pittsburgh today. Um, the five-minute thing. And the league and ESPN have went back and forth on this. And I am sure in my own head and what I witnessed that they were going to at least make an attempt to go at it after five minutes. Um, the players were warming up for both teams. Stephon Diggs addressed the Bills. Um, but I believe that that was just more following protocol and was too low on the totem pole to make that decision. But whoever was on that, whoever was on that low end of the totem pole was communicating to John Perry, the ESPN rules analyst. So I don't necessarily think that ESPN or the NFL are lying. I just think somebody said was a little bit too high up for their britches. You know, that's that's really what what that ended up being. Um, but I thought the league did the right thing by officially suspending the game and then officially canceling the game. My worry was that the game was going to be restarted on Wednesday. That was my concern. And I felt a little bit better about that knowing that the bulk of the team, minus Stefan Diggs and some other players, of course, had came back on the plane late Monday night to Buffalo. Now, the league, I think the major reason why the game did not get restarted is because we did not know the status of DeMar Hamlin by Wednesday. I think, I don't think the players, especially on the Bills, we're going to be comfortable playing without knowing the status of their teammate. And that makes complete sense. Now, the reason why the league could have considered Wednesday is because that would have given teams the same three days of preparation and off time as you would get if you played on Sunday to prepare for a Thursday night game. So... That's why Wednesday seemed like a possibility. I thought the league did the right thing by just out and out canceling the game as if the game did not happen. I want to talk a little bit about the hit. Clean, legal, just at the exact right time when the heart was in between beats. And there is nothing you can do to prevent that. I had somebody at work ask me, now that Demar Hamlin's going to be okay, the NFL is not going to change anything. I go, right. They're not. Because this was so fluky. I've watched all levels of football, probably cognitively, for 35 years. And I've probably watched over a million games. And this is the first time 
I've ever seen that. And it was scary. It was it was really, really frightening. And one of the things that scared me, would I be so hit if if it had happened to another team or on a team I hate or to Tom Brady. I hate Tom Brady, but I wouldn't want Tom Brady to die on a football field. Uh, comments are coming in. Always love that. Uh, Brent, Brent says, dead fish in the air. Yeah. Todd says, uh, <laughs> thank you, Todd, for that. Uh, Chris M, that, that type of injury is more common in lacrosse than is any other sport. Yes, it is. In fact, I don't remember how many years ago, probably about five or six years ago, it, it did lead to the death of, I want to say, a 12 or 13-year-old boy. Um, yeah, yeah, Todd, I didn't see the hate for T. Higgins, but I did hear it was going on, and I do agree uh, completely no call for that. T. Higgins did not do anything wrong. He was playing football. And, and, and that's it. That's all he did. Um, and I felt bad for him too. I, I felt bad for everybody. I felt bad for the 66,000 that were there. I felt bad for everybody who witnessed it. You know, it was, oh, it was scary. It, it was so scary. And the fact that he is alive and recovering it is just incredible. And then Naeem Hines takes the opening kickoff 96 yards for a touchdown. It was surreal. It was visceral. It was incredible. And... Before I talk about the rest of the game, so the NFL, as we know, the NFL came out with their their scenarios. And we now know that the Chiefs are the number one seed. The Raiders are useless. The, the Bills are the two seed. And we now know that if it's Bills-Chiefs in the AFC title game, that'll be played in a neutral field. We also know that it will not be played in Indianapolis due to issues with uh, other events booked and the city's just not going to be prepared for that type of traffic. Human, uh, just that level of population. And we also know that Detroit will not be available due to them replacing the field. We'll get more into where that game could be in a little bit. Um, Todd says, shout out to the Bengals also. They handled everything with class, dignity, and respect. Yes. Yes. From the owner, Mike Brown, head, I thought head coach Zach Taylor, who somebody mentioned on the broadcast, Former Big 12 Player of the Year, and I just, that's, I just can't remember who he played for and when, but yeah, yeah, what an athlete, it, it, it made me, just knowing that made me respect Zach Taylor more, and, and not to go off on this tangent, but uh, WGR's Sabres reporter, oh, Mike would know, Mike V, Nebraska! Thank you, Mike. Um, but Sabres beat reporter for WGR, Paul Hamilton. A lot of people do not like Paul. Paul is dry and can be harsh. Paul Hamilton tried out for the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. And that alone makes me listen to him. So, Zach Taylor... Former Bucks quarterback, former Nebraska quarterback. I, I just I respect him a lot more now. Um 
and you can be mad at me if you want. Hit me up on Twitter at Tim the Commish. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button on uh, on YouTube. Like our page on Facebook. Shop Amazon through our page. Uh, Mike V. Taylor was the Big 12 Player of the Year in 2006. This makes me feel like I have not done enough in my life. Because I graduated college the first time in 2005. Which makes him younger than me. Son of a bitch. John says Cook learned to block today. Yes, he did. He sure did. I, you know, and ultimately, it was the Bengals who got hosed the most. Now, I think the NFL was in an unprecedented situation. Completely unprecedented. Because let's remember here. The scheme was not canceled or postponed due to a hurricane, earthquake, or some other natural disaster event. This game was postponed and eventually canceled because of the most traumatic injury to ever happen or to have happened in over 50 years. I did not like that Kansas City was essentially gifted to buy. In my opinion, that should have still been the Bills buy to lose on the basis, on the basis that Buffalo had already beaten Kansas City head to head. And I think for Cincinnati, I think for Cincinnati, given that they had four losses going into that game, had Kansas City ended up with four losses, and Cincinnati won today, which they did, then Cincinnati should have been the two seed. Uh, that's, that's what I think. I think the way it should have been was, had the Bills won today, they should have been the one. The Chiefs need to win and the Bills lose to be the one, win and they were guaranteed the two, lose and a steal and a Chiefs win, I'm sorry, and a Bengals win, and they'd be the three. And I understand they had 14 wins, but they lost to both Buffalo and Cincinnati head to head. And they got rewarded due to the most traumatic injury, blah 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 blah. Uh, Chris Sam had to laugh at Joe Mixon mocking the whole coin flip nonsense. Yeah, he'll get a fine for that. Todd, he'd love to know who the person was that told Joe Buck the game was going to restart in five minutes because there was no way they were going to go back on the field. Well, one, it was John Perry, their rules, their rules expert, former NFL official. Two, John Perry got that information from somebody from the officials department, whether that was on the field or in New York. Three, they were warming up. It was not until after Zach Taylor went back to Sean McDermott and they agreed, no way man, we gotta take our teams off the field. So, they, they were at least preparing to have to go back out there and keep playing. And thank heavens, they didn't. Um, that just would have been just terrible uh, had that had happened. Um, and, and I think we all agree with that. But, uh, yeah. So instead, the Bills are the two. And Cincinnati... Gets to host Baltimore, but then instead of getting to play Buffalo in Cincy, they got to come here if Buffalo beats Miami. So before we get so let's before we get into that, let's talk about the game today. Obviously, Naeem Hines that that kickoff return was huge and extremely needed. You then think about. Whether or not they should have played everybody today. And 
the answer to that question is yes. It, they, they absolutely needed to, and I will tell you why. Had the accident to uh, DeMar Hamlin not happened, and the Bills lost that game, then they're going to be the three, and you just rest your guys and take that as your bye. But given how horrifying that event was on Monday night, they need to play to shake the cobwebs off, and they need to be hit in the mouth. And kudos to the cheating Patriots. They came out ready to rock and roll, and they hit the Bills in the mouth. They were playing for everything. And I got to watch the game with my old man today, which is not something I get to do a, a lot. And Tony Romo was pissing him off. Because Tony Romo kept... I mean, he was just really, really, really in to New England today. And I think it was because... New England just had so much to play for, where Buffalo, they were more or less playing for a seed. But I did tweet at the NFL and CBS, hey, somebody's got to tell Romo to remember where he is and what we've been through. You, you know, let's let's back off here on the, on the cheering on New England there, Tony. And I usually like you, but good Lord, man, you were... Oh, you're off. Uh, Chris V still thinks the Bengals got the worst of it. For the tie-breaking scenario, the game was a no contest. We don't know who wins that game. I thought they worked it out fair for everyone. I agree, and I also agree that the Bengals did get the short end. Because they, they, by no fault of their own, actually by being human and good humanitarians, they lost out on the ability for the one seed. Now, they would not have gotten it due to Kansas City beating the Raiders on Saturday, but they could have at least played for the two, which would have meant getting Buffalo in the divisional round at home. Instead, that divisional round, assuming both teams win, will be here in Orchard Park. Um... And we also now know that it will be Bills Dolphins. We're just waiting on a time. Uh, and the Dolphins win today 9 6. 9 times. 9 6. Miami wins today, and they're able to sneak into the playoffs at 9 and 8. Uh, Allen, they were a little slow off the get go, and I think they. We're going to be, but Allen turned it around really nicely in the second half. 19 31 for 254. Three touchdowns and one pick. He was sacked twice. He had a pass array of 106.1, a QBR of 81.7. James Cook led all running backs for team day. Nine, nine runs for 45 yards. Devin Singletary needed to get me 39 and a half. For me to uh, cash out on a great single day parlay, and instead he doesn't. He only gets 29 on seven carries, despite having a long of 18. Um, the team only ran for 90 yards. Say it's the first time all season that the Bills have been under 100 yards. Stephon Diggs was back, seven for 104, and the score 10 targets. What a throw! What a catch for the touchdown, John Brown. Welcome back, Smoke. One catch. 42 yards. What a great diving catch today for that touchdown. Gabe Davis is a little shaky. Three catches for 39 yards, but 10 targets. He did have a couple of drops. Yeah. Rough day for him. Um, McKenzie had at least one drop. Jim, Jim says Bengals will be a handful in Orchard Park after dark. Ha ha. If it happens, yeah. I, and I think what we're waiting to see is whether or not Lamar Jackson plays for the Ravens uh, in their wild card game. I think he will. It sounds like he was ready to go. They just, the Ravens didn't really have a lot to play for. 
And so I think sitting him out and yet keeping that game relatively close is a good sign for Baltimore. And you think about that for a second here. Pretend that Baltimore beats Cincinnati. That would send Baltimore with a healthy Lamar Jackson to Kansas City. Buffalo would then get the winner of Jacksonville and the Chargers. Kind of like it. Kind of like it a lot. <laughs> Todd, Todd asks if any of you guys want to be an NFL head coach. There will be plenty of vacancies after tomorrow. I sure do. But I don't speak, well, I don't speak a foreign language. I mean, I speak Kung Fu. I mean, I, mean, I don't know if you know this, but I speak Kung Fu. You know, you, you have messed lots of numbers on the dragon. Your numbers are great. However, there is still to learn. Anyway. I thought New England had a decent game plan today. Matt Jones, you know, it's funny. I thought on a lot of those out patterns that Matt Jones drew today, the ball looked like he was like slipping out of his hand. And it looked like these, like almost like these high arching wounded ducks. And so uh, it was weird. Uh, Jones today was 26 of 40 for 243, three touchdowns, three picks. He just. He just can't come back. He is a much better quarterback when when playing with the lead. He he just does not have that ability to come back. Um, you know, and, and I thought I thought New England answering back with that touchdown was huge. And going into the half, tied at fourteen and getting that red zone. Uh, and getting that red zone interception was huge for him. Oh boy. Mike, I look professional, but I love chaos! Florio says that Tua could possibly play in the playoffs. Do we have do we have any word from Dolphins head coach Bud Kilmer? I I mean Mike McDaniel. Chris, you're right, Chris. Buffalo eliminates 2022. Buffalo eliminates New England from the playoffs. 2023, Buffalo eliminates New England from playoff contention. Love that. Uh, Chris V, listen, this is a tough road. Miami is no walk in the park. They proved that they can play in the primetime game in the weather. Then likely Cincinnati. Don't see Baltimore beating them. Then KC, that's a tough, tough road. I think it's a, I, I agree. I think it's a tough, tough road. For anybody, including the NFC, um, I, I don't think there's an easy game. Period. In the well, let me rephrase that. I think San Francisco will make relatively short work of either Green Bay or Seattle. But after that, man, you just don't know. You you just don't know. Todd, with a good point, he just thought of something. All three Florida teams have made the playoffs. I don't think that's ever happened. That may be a first that Jacksonville, Miami, and Tampa Bay are all in the playoffs. Yeah, I, And I know Green Bay has been hot lately, but San Fran in Santa Clara it is... That's a tough out. Um, Chris V says, depends when the Vikings game is. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, the Vikings are 10 and 1 when they play at 1 o'clock. Uh, I am sure that Vikings owner Ziggy Wilf is doing everything he can to get Roger Goodell to make sure that the Vikings play the Giants on Sunday at 1 o'clock. Um, you know, I thought Allen in overall, I thought Allen played great. I thought he I was a little worried about his hero ball tactics because he had check downs open all game and by and large just didn't go to him. 
but he was able. I, I, I tell you, the those throws, especially the throw to John Brown, and and here's the difference between a Josh Allen versus a Mac Jones. Mac Jones, if you remember near the end of the game, Mac Jones has to put his whole body into this big launch that goes off of his receiver's head. Meanwhile, Josh Allen, while on the run, goes like this, and just, <gasps> gone. Gone! And it's a touch. Like, the athletic the athleticism and arm talent of Josh Allen. The man has changed the game. The man, him and Patrick Mahomes have changed the game. I can't remember the last time that guys were drafted strictly on potential and it worked out to this point. Like, worked out this well. I mean, Mahomes didn't do anything at Texas Tech. Nothing of real remembrance. And Allen was helter-skelter and considered raw and a project from Wyoming. And they have changed the NFL. They have changed the game forever. Barry says, Barry, welcome to the show. His Super Bowl prediction, Bills Niners. I like it. I like it a lot. I am not 100%. I am leaning either Bills Niners or Bills Eagles in the Super Bowl. Am I convinced that Brock Purdy can go to Philadelphia and win? Not yet. Not yet. But San Fran, I don't know what to think of San Fran's defense. Giving up 34 to Jared Stidham, it is, it's inexcusable. I'm sorry. But going back to the game today, Hines with the two kickoff returns for a touchdown has not happened. That has not happened since 2010, that one player, Leon Washington, in 2010 ran back two kickoffs in the same game for a touchdown. It's unheard of. It, it is, it, it's, but it was needed. It was desperately needed. And funny enough, even though the Bills go down 17-14, once they once they take the 21-17 lead, it, it was officially game over. And that was of course with the second um and that of course was with the second Naeem Hines uh kickoff return touchdown. Um Chris M says Bills versus Vikings, a battle of teams are 0-4 in the Super Bowl. Respectfully, I, I Minnesota's not going to get the ability to play all three games at 1 o'clock, so therefore I don't see it happening. Um, Kirk Cousins turns into like a snail or something if he doesn't play at 1. Um, Chris V says 14 points off of spe special teams plus three turnovers and New England wouldn't go away. And I think that was exactly the type of game that Buffalo needed to play against today. I, I don't think they could have played against somebody that was going to roll over, which turned out nobody did. But they needed to be hit in the mouth to help them get over DeMar Hamlin to make this work for them, if that makes sense. This was exactly the type of game they needed. They needed a team that was going to be relentless and was going to come after them. And kudos to the Patriots. They did. They did. 
And Chris V piggybacking off his own point. In most cases, that happens versus Buffalo, and they win the game by 30. Oh, absolutely. A absolutely. I just, New England was playing for their season, and rightfully so. They were playing for a winning season, and, the, you know, they were, they were trying to hang in there. And I don't, you know, I, I thought they played as well of a game as they could. I thought they had a solid game plan defensively. They really did a great job overall of keeping Allen away from scrambling out of the pocket. Twice he did it and he throws laser beams for touchdowns. But for the most part, they were able to keep him in the pocket. They didn't let his legs burn them. They kept the running game to, to a minimum, giving up two kick returns for touchdowns. That's going to keep Bill Belichick up at night. That, that really is. Because, again, it's happened once in 12 years. So, Jim, yes, Jim and Chris M., I agree. Bill's Vikings Super Bowl would be quite a story. With the Vikings being the three, I don't see them going to San Francisco and beating the Niners. And I don't see them going to Philly and beating the Eagles either. Now, if they go to San Francisco and beat the Niners and get a rematch for the new cast five years later, it, it could be a different story. But... Cousins is going to have to have his A game against that against that defense, and that defense is going to have to wake up. And that, more so than Cousins' inability to win outside of 1 o'clock Eastern, may really be the Achilles heel for, uh, for Minnesota. That defense is not very good. Oh, no, 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 Dan, not these dolphins. These dolphins are not mammals. They're fish. They're fish. Yeah, no, 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 no. Winter, the dolphin who lived without a tail for almost her whole life, she was a mammal. They're, these, these people, these things are fish. Um, are the, Jim wants to know, are the eagles clicking after the Hertz injury? Uh, kind of, sort of, yes. I think they'll be fine. I think the bye will actually help them. I think it'll help make sure that Hertz is okay, give him more of a full week's worth of practice, and, and he'll be okay. Uh, Todd wants to know, thoughts on the Chargers losing both Mike Williams and Joey Bosa to injuries, and why the hell would Brandon Staley play his starters in a meaningless game? Because Brandon Staley is a moron on the last game of the regular season. Think back to the Raiders game last year. He just doesn't know how to coach those games. No idea. But overall, I like Allen's game in this game today. I, I thought the defense took a little bit too long to kind of shore itself up. You know... Dean Marlowe was okay in replacing uh, DeMar Hamlin. And, and, and let me get this out of the way, too. In my opinion, so I, I don't know. I mean, he's 24 years old. He's a professional athlete in, in, the, uh, in the shape of his life. I guess never say never. But I would, I was assuming that his career would be over. Um, and if it is, I would like to see the Bills retire number three for DeMar Hamlin. Um, that's, that I think is a big deal. Uh, ooh, Barry, coming out hot. He says, when the Dolphins return to Orchard Park, they're going to be carted off. Uh, 
They're going to be carted off like the minnows they are, he says. Oh, boy. Uh, Chris V says, in response to Todd for resting his players, I think you need to be consistent enough and sharp enough to earn the right to rest guys. No team that rested guys today are. I think rhythm and confidence and momentum is more valuable for fringe teams. Didn't work for Dallas today, but, you know, you can go back and forth on that. Yeah, I... <sighs> I think the big thing is when the Chargers took the field at 4 o'clock today, they knew they were locked into the 5 seed. They could not go down. And I think maybe you play your starters for a quarter or two, and then you take them out. And in that case, and every case is different. I think that has to be said. Every case is different. Chris M. says, people forget that Teddy Bruschi from New England came back and played football after suffering a stroke. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't forget. You know why I didn't forget? Because Mike Patrick, Joe Deisman, and Paul McGuire wouldn't let me. His first game back was on ESPN Sunday night game against the Bills. Every play... Even if the Patriots were on offense, they went to Teddy Bruschi. It was ridiculous. We, McGuire kept talking about about Bruschi. We were making. I was watching the game with my cousins that night, and we were making jokes like, "Oh, and the Patriots gained four yards on that run." Oh, but did you see what Bruschi did there? Bruschi ran out of the stadium, went up a tree, rescued a kitty cat, and came back. Oh, <laughs> well, hockey players are different. <laughs> Did he have a cardiac arrest on the ice, though? Did Chris Pronger? Are you sure you got that guy right? I don't remember Pronger having a cardiac arrest. Who was the Dallas star that was on the bench in between shifts and basically started having a hearty, heart attack on the ice? Was that Beverly? Uh, let's see here. Qu questions are coming in hot and heavy. Todd, I'll get to yours in a second. Uh, yeah, Rich Beverly. Thank you, Dan. Oh, I pulled that out of my butt. Chris uh, V says, believe so, early 90s after a slap shot to the chest. I'll have to look that up. Uh, Jim says, give me a four seed or worse that makes an AFC or NFC championship game. Uh, as I'm watching this doink in the uh, Packers game here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, boy. Well, in the NFC, if they don't look like how they look today, Dallas. I think Dallas as a five seed is, is realistic. Um, you know what? I, losing both of those, a big, I was going to say the Chargers. AFC side, I, I, if, if Bosa and Williams can't go for the Chargers, I don't see them scoring enough points against that stingy Jacksonville defense in Jacksonville. Um, yeah, no, I don't see it on the AFC side right now. NFC side, if Dallas can play to their potential, Dallas has a legitimate shot. Dallas has a legitimate shot. Because if you think about for a second here, say Minnesota beats the Giants, Dallas beats Tampa, Dallas would go to Philly, that's round three of, of a divisional rivalry that really do hate each other. Anything could happen in that game. Um, Chris says the Chargers always give KC a run for their money if they get out of Jacksonville. If they get out of Jacksonville, Chris. Um, 
John says Hamlin playing again depends on the diagnosis. They're still testing exactly. And, and, and just how well he can recover after something like that. Todd wants to know... Um, Thoughts on Denver interviewing Sean, both Sean Eaton and Jim Harbaugh to be their next head coach. Uh, I think Harbaugh is arguably one of the one of the greatest coaches uh, in the game. Period. Uh, because even though he's not won a national title or a Super Bowl, uh, what he has done at both levels, I think Jim Harbaugh could go anywhere and win. Um, <laughs> Mike and Dan talking about uh, Jaguars owner's son and AEW owner Tony Khan. We're enjoying that. Um, Chris said, um, Ronnie Watt missed two plays after having part of his finger amputated on the side. Dude, it's a finger. It's a finger. It's not his heart. He didn't have CPR. He didn't get resuscitated twice. He didn't get brought back to life twice. Twice. These, these idiots saying that Kansas City earned the one sale. Like, are you nuts? Uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot that you can pick apart about the Bills game today. But I'm purposely choosing not to because of what they were coming off of. The fact that they won this game. The fact that they won this game. Shows how good they are. Because there's no way they were 100% mentally ready for this game. <laughs> sure is, Dan. Uh, Chris V. Who's coach of the year? McDermott for weathering the storm all season with all the advers adversity. Doug for the turnaround. Jacksonville, Doug Peterson. Or Dable for just an incredible coaching job. McDermott's never going to win coach of the year. Um, he should have gotten it the year they ended the drought. He didn't. Uh, it, it, with all due respect to Doug Peterson, uh, his, his turnaround job going from Worse to first is simply incredible. However, he has coached in the NFL before, a head coach, has won a Super Bowl. For Dable to do with the Giants in his first season as an NFL head coach, I, I think it's still going to be uh, Brian Dable. I I, uh, I still think that despite the Jags winning the uh, the AFC South last night, I I still think it's going to be Brian Dable uh, as coach of the year. I I just think that there's a romanticism with the Giants and the fact that they're back in the playoffs is a big deal. My predictions on what time games are going to be played. Uh, as I'm pulling it up, because I, I tweeted it out, and I only remember exactly everything I tweeted. Uh, so Saturday, 4.30, I think it will be Chargers at Jacksonville. AFC South team only seems to play that, uh, that first playoff game of the season. Uh, 8.15, I think it will be Dallas at Tampa Bay. Yes, they usually do announce it during this schedule. Jim says Dan Campbell should be coach of the year. Uh, they're not going to get if they do not win this game, they will not have a winning season. They will not make the playoffs. Uh, so it, it it's down to Dable and Peterson. I think it will still be Dable. And by the way, from a technical standpoint, didn't the Giants have a better record than the? Uh, then the Jags, Jags finished 9-8, Giants finished 9-7-1.
Uh, Sunday, 1 o'clock, I, I, I just think the Vikings are going to get that. They're going to get that 1 o'clock game on Sunday against the Giants. I think Baltimore at Cincinnati is the 4.30 game on Sunday. Miami and the Bills Sunday night at 8.15. And then that makes the Monday night game. I had Green Bay winning tonight. Um... But Green Bay at San Francisco Monday night. I I think there's a chance. And can't yes, Campbell will have them at nine and eight, but they won't be in the playoffs. Where Dable and Peterson has their teams respectively in the playoffs. Uh, Mike V says he's not for this, but some people are saying Shanahan. For surviving with their with his two top quarterbacks out, yeah, that's that's not a bad argument. But I I think the romanticism is with Dable and the Giants. Um, Jim thinks the Lions will win tonight. They certainly could. They're winning right now. Todd, thoughts on the BCS title game tomorrow night? I like ECU. They're getting no respect from Vegas as a twelve and a half point underdog. And they're literally playing with house money. Yeah, I think TCU is going to come out strong, kind of like what Ohio State did. But uh, I, I think at the end of the day, college football, the, the talent on Georgia is too much. Dogs, dogs win in a higher scoring game than they want to be, but the dogs are back-to-back -back national champions. So, yeah, Seattle. Seattle gets in if if Detroit beats Green Bay. Seattle gets in if Detroit beats Green Bay. Real quick here. Yeah, no, I I do too, Chris. Chris says he likes the story of TCU, but man, if this was ever a season for a twelve team playoff, this was it. Yeah. I would tend to agree with that. I would tend to agree with that. I think it would be interesting to have seen, had it been a 12-team playoff, does DJ Ugabanow, I can't even pronounce his last name, but the, does the Clemson quarterback stay and try and get in for the playoff, for the first playoff game, or does he enter the transfer portal right away? <laughs> Dan, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. There are people getting very upset. There's somebody that wants to go to bed, and uh, they want this playoff schedule released. And, and we all do. We all do. And, and yes, Jim, I saw that before going on the air tonight. Uh... That Deuce Chesna is transferring to LSU. We will have another day to talk Syracuse football. Because I have some philosophical recruiting questions for the Syracuse faithful. Um, not that I necessarily agree with my own take. Todd says... How about Houston beating the Colts, giving the Bears the number one pick in the draft? You play to win the game, right? You sure do. You sure do. Um, well, because Dan is insisting, I will try and pronounce this for him. Uh, he says it looks like Rogers looks like he's into the Ayahu Ezeka tonight. The I the Ayahu tonight. All right, all right. People thinking that Notre Dame won the portal. They may have. Um. But listen, I I think so. Let's talk about this Bills Dolphins game. I think coming in. You know, you're, you're still reeling off of DeMar Hamlin. You lose the number one seed by no fault of your own. 
I think if Tua plays, which, as a Bills fan, I never want to see the starting quarterback play for the other team, but as a human being and as a football fan, I don't want to see Tua play because he's already suffered three concussions this season. And you just... I don't know, man. Concussions are not broken fingers. And I feel like he's being treated like these are broken fingers. He's just going to come back out there and play. And I think that's a mistake. Did, did Tyreek Hill finish the game, by the way? I know he went out injured for a little bit. Um, but... I think with or without Tua, I think Buffalo. I think Buffalo wins it. I think it'll be relatively low scoring. Buffalo pulls away late, twenty-seven seventeen. Bills win, and I will be there. I will be there for the playoff game, regardless of when it is. Um, so you can talk to me, tailgate with me. We understand that the Western New York Brian Will with the administration is looking at advisories on how to handle incorrect Dolphin fans at the stadium. You know, in, in my opinion, there should be any and all Dolphin winter gear should be confiscated and thrown into fires because there's no need for winter gear in South Florida. So... Therefore, you don't need winter gear because you're a Dolphin fan. Show up to the game in a tank top and a pair of shorts. <laughs> Chris then says just crop dust them. Could happen. <laughs> Chris V says Dolphin winter gear. Okay, that's your best yet. Yeah, I mean, they, they play in South Florida. It, you know, it's one thing for them to have a poncho. It rains down there. But don't snow in Miami. They don't need a toque. They don't need a toque down, down there, so they don't need a toque up here. Come up here and freeze. I'm talking about their fans. Their, their players, that's a different story. But for their fans... I don't ever like seeing the other team's fans in our stadium. I hate it. I hate it. It's kind of a novelty, though, when it's like it's the Chargers. What if they were born and raised in Miami but moved to upstate New York? One, why would you do that? Two, going to have to provide proof of past residency, bud. That's... And we do know a guy... You and I both know a guy, former wrestling coach, who uh, who actually has done that. He actually he actually sent me a picture of his like second grade class from Fort Lauderdale with his dolphin jersey on, and that counts. That counts. So yeah, we'll have that proof of past residency. You know how it is, the WNYPLA, we are firm, but we are fair. I, I know that, you know, I'm a senior fellow there. I know that we're discussing what to do with incorrect Raiders fans. Oh, no kidding, John, and they should all be deported. Most of the Miami fans in the stadium are from Western New York. That's right, and they're terrible, terrible people. Horrible, horrible, illogical, unethical people. And yes, the Packers have just taken the lead back. I mean, what makes you go, you know what? I want to hate the local team so much. I'm going to cheer for the team they hate the most. Like, what level of douchebaggery must you have in your soul to do that? Which I do to a point, Chris. 
Yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, a few of them tweet way, way too much during the games. A lot of them do. And I think... And again, I, I they won today. They won today. And there's no way that they were fully mentally ready to play. How could you be? How could you be? A friend, Chris M says a friend of yours became a Dolphins fan mainly because his dad is a Bills fan. That poor father tried to do the right thing. What a terrible son. Awful, awful son. Oh, God, Todd. Gary, I have no idea what you're talking about. Todd, they should keep their mouth shut if only Skip Bayless took that same advice. I hate Skip Bayless. I really do. Like, who watches him and goes, yeah, he's great. Like, even the guys on Barstool are not as douchebaggish as he is. And I'm not making fun of the guys on Barstool. They're trying to be funny. No, nobody likes Skip. Probably Cowboy fans like Skip. You know, the Cowboy fans from, like, Minneapolis like Skip Bayless. You know? I love how we go off the rails on this show. <laughs> I love how we do that here. Why not? Why not? We're just going to go off the rails. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, G Gary. Gary asked about the, quote, it's around the world. I, I don't know if anybody... Kiss heard around the world. Yeah, Mike McDaniel got really, really close to Robert Sala there. Are we sure that's Mike McDaniel or is that Bud Kilmer in disguise? I I think it is. I think it's I think it's Bud Kilmer in dis in disguise. So, <laughs> Chris V says Sala gave McDaniel some love. He's gonna need it. I, it, it'll be interesting to see when this game is played. I really hope it's not played Monday night. Because that probably means I've got to pull an all-nighter. And I, I'm still wondering why the NFL has not announced when these games are going to be played. It's kind of driving me nuts. But on that note, I want to thank you as always for for joining me here on a Sunday night. Bills win 35-23. They finished the regular season officially 13-3. and Third straight year as AFC East Division champions. They are the two seed. Uh, Chris V says they're probably waiting for this game. They want Rodgers on prime time always. And even though Green Bay is the smallest mark in the NFL, they do have a huge national fan base. Todd says there's talk Salem might be out in New York. I doubt it, but suggests so you never know. As a Bills fan, I hope he is. Because that would help make the Jets stall even more. Um... Thanks, Care. Love you too, buddy. Um, but objectively, the Jets should not, should not fire Robert Sala. Robert Sala is what kept the Jets in this season. With what they've got going on at quarterback, Robert Sala deserves an extension not to be fired. But that would be a very Jetsy move. And as a Bills fan, I welcome it. 
But objectively, it would be a big mistake. It would be a huge mistake to do that. Todd says shout out to the Sabres. Hell of a win. Dude, undefeated in the black and red goat heads, and they have scored six goals every time they've worn those jerseys. Unbelievable. Sold out crowd last night. Really into it. The scene in that arena when the Sabres tied it up at five, the game practically stopped while the fans gave the Sabres a standing ovation. It was just awesome. It was just awesome. Jim says Orange men's basketball team to the NIT, as long as they have a winning record, I say yes. I say yes to that. I say yes to you for joining me tonight. Chris, you should. They're great. I've been the two this year. You should totally go. Uh, I I will be there. Whenever that game is, Bills, Dolphins, I will be there. Hit me up on Twitter at Tim the Commish or on, or on Facebook at the WMYPLA page. Let me know if you're going. be great to see you there. Uh, but I will be there for the wild card game, Bills and Dolphins. Either Saturday, Sunday, or God, I hope it's not Monday. Um, on that note, I am Tim Sansel. Uh, until next time, go Bills, go Sabres, go Cues. Tell some at home you love them. See ya!